Good morning and welcome to Central. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us here this morning, whether you are in person or online. If this is your first time or you have been attending for years, we just want to welcome you and just so appreciate you being here with us. And I want to introduce you to my co-host, Calissa. Hi, Janet. How are you doing? Truth time, I'm freezing. Uh, yeah, well, I was wondering why your mic kept like shaking like this. I'm trying to keep it together. <laughs> we are so glad that you are here. If it's your first time, if you're new here, if you're in person, go ahead and head to our connections wall. You're going to look for our staff and volunteers in blue shirts and lanyards. They would love to meet you. Alternatively, if you are watching online, let us know where you're watching from. We know we have people from all over the yes, world. We do. You can chat with our online host and click the request prayer button. If you're in person or online, you can text us at 905-937-5610. We would love for you to share this experience. If you're online, you could go to YouTube and Facebook. In person, snap yeah. a photo. Uh, tag us online at Central CC. And again, let us know where you're watching from. Excellent. Our vision here at Central is to help you connect to God and to each other. And we primarily do that through groups. Groups, of course. <laughs> so we have five different kinds of groups here. Community groups, small groups, interests, support, and serve groups. And this is a very exciting time of year because we are actually launching winter groups. So you want to make sure that you check that out at our highlight wall with the balloons. You can't miss them. And ask all kinds of questions about groups. And you can look up our whole list of groups at centralcc.ca slash groups. But this morning, I just want to highlight a couple of things that you may be interested in. This week, we are starting A Place For You. This is a three-week group that will give you an introduction to Central, answer questions, help you connect with people, figure out what kind of group even suits me later, and Pastor Bill and myself lead it, so I'm a little it's biased. A good group. It's amazing. It really is amazing. <laughs> so you want to sign up for that? Also, if you are kind of ready for that next step, you maybe want to try out a place for more. And that also starts this week and all the details are online. But this week, I want to really draw your attention to our support groups because really, we truly believe we're not meant to walk alone in this life, right? We need people with us. And sometimes we just want to focus on that area of our life that we want to grow in. And so make sure you check out our Freedom Session, Life's Healing Hurts, and Grief Share. These are great, safe groups, safe place to talk and share people who are going through the same thing on their journey. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that we like to do here at Central at the beginning of every year is 21 days of prayer. So it's already started. It continues tomorrow at 6 a.m. The theme this year is God's promises, which is such a powerful way mm -hmm. to start this year off and allow God to speak to us. So you can join us Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then again on Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. If you're like me, it is super hard. <laughs> to get up that early, but that's okay. There's lots of options. You can tune in online. I've heard of some people that are watching it before they go to bed or during the day. Mm -hmm. However, you can get plugged in. All the details are online for our 21 days of prayer. So times, devotional guide. Um, so if you want to go to centralcc.ca slash 21 days for more info. Excellent. And right at the end of 21 days is our encounter worship night where we're going to celebrate stories, things that, we, that we've seen God do over those 21 days. And that is Sunday, January the 28th at 6 p.m. right here. So make sure that you put that on your calendar because you are not going to want to miss that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you came prepared to give today, there are three simple ways that you can do that. You can head on to our website at centralcc.ca slash give. So you can do a one-time mm -hmm. gift or set up ongoing giving. In the lobby at our giving kiosk by exit B and our new location at exit A, you can give by cash, check, debit, or credit. And mm -hmm. on your way out uh, at exit A, you can use a tip-tap machine. You can actually tap up to 10 times, which is super mm -hmm. convenient. We just want to thank you for your generosity as we help connect Connect you to God and each other. Yes. And if you have any questions today, uh, just visit our connections wall and look for someone in a blue shirt or a lanyard, and they're happy to help you. You can also visit our website at centralcc.ca. You can check out previous messages, contact our staff, stay updated on coming events. There's actually an event calendar online right at the bottom of the homepage. And if you're here with us, then please just take a minute and scan the QR code in the seat back in front of you. You can send us questions that way. You can also text at 905-937-5610 because really we're here to assist you in any way that we can. So 
That's a lot of information. That's it. That's all. Yeah, that's it. That's a wrap <laughs> for us. So once again, we are so glad you've taken the time to join us. It's going to be another great day as we continue in our brand new series, Take Heart. Pastor Bill is back and ready to share about one of God's promises. So let's head into the auditorium as our Sunday experience begins right now. God's creativity is on display. A place where beauty is revealed across every nation and every generation. Where community is worth fighting for and belonging is our mission. We are a vibrant people because of what God has done in us. It's His love that is changing us and only His love that will change our world. We see a place where trust is forged, where purpose is reclaimed and hope is found. And as the church, we are in the center of what he is doing in our region. We are a place where people are our mission. People sometimes come up to me and they say, Bill, the church should and fill in the blank. And I always think to myself, you're right. You should, because you are the church. We are a place where transformation is our goal. The truth is, God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. We are a place where community is our heart. You and I were created with the need to be loved and the capacity to love in return. That's why nobody should ever walk alone. We are a place where Jesus is the way. We believe that even when people fail to love, it doesn't mean that love fails because God's love always wins. This is a place for you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Central. Why don't you stand with us if you're able while we sing this morning? Let everything that has been And I'll praise when surrounded, yeah. Cause praise is the water, my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, I'm gonna praise the Lord, oh my soul. And I'll praise when I don't. And I'll praise because I know you're still in control. Because my praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. More than a sound. Oh, my praise is a shout that brings Jericho down. As long as I'm breathing. Praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you're sovereign. 
praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul.
love singing that song because I love that the song acknowledges the fact that there's going to be storms in life and there's going to be rain and there's going to be snow and ice and wind, but even so, we can trust God and we can have faith in Him if we build our life on Him, if we remember that He's in control and He's got us, but it doesn't mean that life will be perfect. And what I like about how the Bible talks about God is it calls Him a good God and it uses good in the widest sense of the word, meaning that He always wants what's best for us, that He's always working in our favor, that He's always pursuing us with His goodness. And it also means that He always has been, He always is, and He always will be good to us. Yeah, yeah, that's worth celebrating. But I know that there's someone here who says, but not all the time, or not for me. I appreciate what you're saying, but it's, it's not true for me. And I can say that because that person used to be me. I have stood with my arms crossed during worship and saying, that's not true for me. And I'd like to tell you from my heart that I'm sorry that you think that, but it's a lie. Because God is good. And you're believing a lie. And in Jesus' name, I come against that. And I want you to know that He is good and He is faithful and He's always got your back, even when you don't think He does. And that's the beauty of it, is we don't always have to see it to believe it. So we're gonna sing another song about the goodness of God. And even if that's hard for you today, I want you to at least think it, believe it in your heart if you can't get the words out. But the rest of us, we're gonna sing it out like we mean it for those people today.
God, that you are a good God, you're a good father, you're a good friend, that we can trust you, we can love you, and so we give you all the praise, we give you all the worship today. Thank you for seeing us, thank you for choosing us, thank you for loving us. We love you back. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. You can go ahead and grab a seat. Good morning. It is a cold day outside. I think in Spanish the word goes mucho frío. So it's cold, but anyway. But we are Canadians and we're handle it. And you know, April, May, June will be here soon enough. Hey, I hope everybody is having a great new year and off to a tremendous start. There's something so great about the new year. It gives you a chance to reflect on on your life and some of the changes that you wanna make, not only for 2024, but also for the rest of your life. And sometimes the best way to make a change is to make a new habit. Because a habit, you know, change your habits and you change your life. And I wanna bring your attention to a term that's relatively new, it's maybe hit the marketplace 10 years ago, it's called a keystone habit. Now a keystone habit is a small change that you make into your life and you put it into your routine that unintentionally carries over into other aspects of your life. Let me say this again in another way that if you had like a, a, a stone and you throw it into a pond, you will see the, the ripples that come after you throw that stone in. So for example, if you think uh, exercise, for example, exercise would be classified as a keystone habit. Because when you exercise, you're a little bit more uh, thinking about your, what, what you're putting into your mouth. You're a little bit more disciplined. You're getting stronger. You're seeing the effects of exercise. You're feeling more energetic. You have the ability to have less stress in your life. And you realize that uh, I'm sleeping better. That is a keystone habit. From one thing comes many others. Another one may be as simple as making your bed. When you get up in the morning, you make your bed and you have that sense of accomplishment that I am gonna take on the day because I am accomplishing things by making my bed and I'm only beginning about all the great things that are gonna happen today. So that would be another one. But you know, here at Central, let me tell you, we offer one of the best keystone habits that you could ever get involved in. I am speaking for myself for about 30 years of experience, and I know that I've talked to many other people who do the same thing here, and I know that the proven research shows time and time again about the great habit of volunteering. Volunteering is one of those things that has so many multiple facets of benefit in your life that it will just propel you into places that you never thought possible. The research shows that those who, who volunteer have greater health benefits. They get back more than they give. You know, I have brothers who really love to mock me about me spending time in the parking lot. But really, the joke's on them because I have more, I get way back, I get back more than I ever give. 
I have improved physical and mental health. People who volunteer experience more joy and greater sat satisfaction. They experience less stress and less anxiety. You're part of a community focused on one, one goal and you're more focused on others rather than you are on yourself. And that's from volunteering, that's from maybe committing to once a week, twice a, twice a month, once a month. But all of those benefits come from volunteering. You know, I love the local church and I love the way it's set up for people like me and you to be able to volunteer and to really use your gifts for you, the gifts that satisfy yourself, that it was, if you're friendly, if you're social, whatever it is, but it really benefits uh, you because you give out, but it benefits the body, it benefits the church. And I just love the local church and that opportunity. Pastor Bill can't do everything by himself. Volunteers are needed to be able to help other people. And how many people here love Central? Come on. Let me say this statement, and I know that this is true, that if you love Central now and you're not involved, if you get involved, you will love Central that much more because you will appreciate what goes on behind the scenes. If you're part of the production team, you're gonna see that what happens here on Sunday just doesn't happen just like that. There's so much planning and preparation that go on. The people with the blue shirts, all the things that they go through and all the scheduling and the huddles that we have and the Tim Hortons donuts, all that great stuff that we have and the kids and the way that they're training kids to be the next generation. There are so many things that go behind the scenes that will just make you love the local church that much more. There's something about volunteering and there's something that you may say, yeah, but I'm not social, Garrett, like you, but that's okay, you don't have to be social. Maybe you could run a camera. Maybe you could be on the computer doing graphics. Maybe you could help serve coffee in the cafe. Maybe you can help with the kids in the, in, in the changing diapers and to be influencing youth about the mistakes that you've made in your life that you can help them in theirs. Be a life group leader. The list goes on and on and on about the opportunities and the things that lie here just for you to volunteer. So I really want you to think about this. And if you wanna propel your life into that next area, <laughs> that next height, that next level, try volunteering. You will not be disappointed. That I guarantee. That I guarantee. So you may be saying, how do I sign up for this? Well, there's a QR code on the screen, on the bottom there. Please take out your phones, I don't mind but I would love for you to be able to scan that QR code or in the seat in front of you, there's also a QR code. Now, I'm not asking you to sign your life away. I'm not asking for that, but perhaps you can sign up today and say, you know what? I'm willing to see where my gifts and talents lie that I can help the local church. So I, and I have a great team that will follow up and make sure, and we'll plug you into the exact place that will fit your gifts and talents. But please take this very serious, this, this invitation, because you will not regret it. Uh, if you like, you can also text 905-937-5610 and uh, begin your life to a new level. All right, everybody, that's enough for me. <laughs> so thank you for listening. Please sign that QR code and turn your attention to the screen because Pastor Bill is coming in a few moments. Thank you, everybody. Well, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I, I, I know we're two weeks in, but this is my first week back with you. And so Happy New Year. And I just want to begin 2024 by proclaiming the truth. Uh, you were amazing. Thank you for giving us the privilege to serve with you and one another. It really is a great place to be. 
And so I know that 2024 has so much promise for each and every one of us. And so how many of you started uh, 2024 and you said, this is going to be the best year ever, right? <laughs> okay, reality is already hit in. We're 14 days and all dreams are shattered. I, I know, I know. But the truth is, we all dream of an ideal life, uh, a life full of purpose and fun and relationships. But if we're honest, all of us have these realities. Call them giants, call them mountains, call them walls, limitations, things that seem impossible. And maybe today you're facing a situation, maybe it's a relationship um, that's really struggling. Maybe it's a financial obstacle. You know, you just can't see how you're gonna even make it. It just seems to be getting harder and harder. Maybe it's a doctor's diagnosis. I don't know what your obstacle is today. I don't know what looks impossible, but I do know what Jesus has to say to you today because he said it to his first disciples. And to set the context, he had been explaining to his friends who had been with him for three years. And their expectation was that he was going to kick out the Romans, you know, the oppressive empire. He was going to establish God's kingdom. You know, he was going to bring equality and justice to the world. And he was explaining to them, actually, that's not what's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to die. And when I die, you're going to scatter. Uh, people are going to turn against you. You're going to experience persecution. And they're really confused about this because they're like, well, this isn't the way it's supposed to be, right? And so they had an impossibility, and maybe you do too. And Jesus said to them these words, the words that we are using for this entire uh, month in the series entitled Take Heart. And so if you're facing an impossibility today, a giant, a lion, a wall, a mountain, these words are for you and for me. Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. In this statement, there are two guarantees and a conditional promise. And it's really important to understand that because it'll help you form your expectations for what this year is going to be. Jesus says very clearly the first guarantee is you will have trouble. You'll have trouble. <laughs> Yay, thank you. I uh, get that, that's a guarantee. But he also makes a second guarantee, but don't worry because I have overcome the world. And in the middle is this conditional promise that I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And so today we're gonna talk about what do you do when your situation seems impossible and it seems like God maybe isn't showing up. What do you do then? And so Jesus starts by saying, you will have trouble. This is a guarantee. And, and I know our expectation is that we would live in a world that is pain-free, filled with joy. North Americans are spending all their time trying to eliminate suffering, trouble, trial. And, and because we live in a world that is troubled. Uh, I get this. And I'm going I'm to rant for a second on a first world problem, okay? Uh, I just got back from traveling, and if you want to see trouble, just go to an airport, right? And so, you know, people talk about the marvel of engineering that flying is, right? That they can get, take this big piece of metal and hundreds of people and fly them through the air from one location to the other. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, if these engineers are so awesome, can they not design a seat that doesn't make your rear end numb in 15 minutes? Right? Like, come on. Can, can they not design an armrest that can be shared equally by two people? Like, have you ever noticed that? Whenever you get on the plane, you're always sitting next to someone and they, they take everything. You have no room, right? Come on. You want to talk about an engineering fee? Fix that. And then they say, you know, well, you're, not, you're only allowed to take one uh, carry-on piece. And then some person comes with three. And they take up all your area of space. You don't have any room for yours. So you got to stick it under your... Now you have no room at all. And like... I know, it's a first world problem, but it's a trouble, it's a trouble, right? And then have you ever noticed this too? How is it that you're always like the furthest gate possible in the airport? Like I, they know you're coming and you have to like run basically a quarter marathon just to get to your gate. And so you're parched, dying of thirst and they charge you eight bucks for the water. And then, okay, okay I know I'm, I'm ranting, but work with me here. Okay, they know how many people are getting on the plane, right? 
So do you think they could have enough seats in the waiting area for everybody who's gonna get on the plane? Nope, they don't, nope, they don't. And there's always that guy who's taking like three seats. I know they put the rest there to break up, but he's like, got his you know, pillow out, blanket out, suit, shoes off. Come on, people, right? This, there's trouble in this world. I'm sorry, I'm good. Whew. My, my therapist said, just get it out, you know? So I did, there it is. Um, thanks. Uh, <laughs> but Jesus said you're gonna have trouble. And I know that's a, that's a minor one, but we all have trouble. But as I was reading this passage, I really felt God challenging me on this. And I wanna challenge you on it as well. Because I always think of trouble in a negative way. Trouble is something that keeps me from what I want. Trouble is something that is a limitation to my desire. And so I don't want trouble. But what if trouble was actually a gift? You're like, what? Yeah, let me just work with me here for a second. Without resistance, nothing grows. So you think about your muscles, right? Uh, when, you're, when you're a baby and you're, you're, you're learning to walk, you have to learn how to resist right, gravity, and, or, or when you get older, you work out, you create resistance in your life so that your muscles can grow. Or think of a vehicle. If there's no resistance, if there's no gravity, you couldn't move forward and you couldn't stop, which would be really bad. So resistance is actually necessary. Or a diamond, uh, coal without resistance never becomes a diamond. So the challenge for me this week was, well, what if resistance actually is a necessary part of human growth? And not just in the physical sense, in the relational sense. Like what if you actually need resistance to learn what it means to be a human being, loving, compassionate, forgiving, empathetic in your relationships? And what about in your mind? What if resistance, you know, those conflicting thoughts and that struggle, that wrestle, what if that's necessary for your mind to become sharp and alert, to grow? What about spiritually? What if resistance is actually a necessary part of human experience so you and I can be who we were created to be? Would it change how you saw the trouble in 2024? Maybe... Maybe this is what Jesus, or, or sorry, what Paul meant in Romans when he said, we know, we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. So here's the deal. What if you were actually created with a divine purpose? What if you weren't an accident? What if you were actually predestined by God to become something amazing and trouble was a part of that. See, this word trouble in the, in the Greek is the Greek word thlipsis, which is kind of fun to say. Uh, thlipsis, which means a narrow place, a refining, a constraining, but not so that you're limited, but rather so that you grow. Uh, I got thinking about things that are useful, like metal. <laughs> and I got thinking about how in order for us to have useful tools, metal ore has to be heated to a point where it literally melts so that it can be poured into a mold so it can be transformed or conformed into an image that we can use. So I thought, okay, in 2024, I'm gonna have trouble. But with rather allowing that to define me or defeat me, or rather than becoming a victim, what if I could see it as an opportunity to become who God created me to be? Because he says, God foreknew he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son. What if, just, just spitballing with you, what if the trouble in your life is actually so you could become more like Jesus? So you could learn to really forgive when you've been hurt. Or you could learn to love even when that love isn't returned. Or you could learn to find peace and joy in situations that are incredibly difficult. What if, what if that's the point of trouble? In this world, you will have trouble. Why? Because God's doing something great in your life. 
And you know what I've learned about life is the greater the goal, the greater the calling, the greater the vision, the greater the resistance. Right? And so God challenged me how I think about trouble. So in this world, you will have trouble, Jesus said. But then he has this promise in the middle. It's a conditional promise. He says, but I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. What were these things that he was telling them? He was like, look, I'm going to tell you in advance so you can expect it. You're not surprised by it, even though they were. I'm telling you these things so that in me you may have peace. Now, I never saw the word may. Obviously, I did. I read it. But I never saw the impact of this word may. It's conditional. It means literally in the original language to take hold of something. So according to Jesus, peace isn't something that's a byproduct. It's something you take hold of. Are you with me? Peace is not because your life is great. Peace is something you choose. Okay, let me work with you here. Okay. When I was uh, first, when I first met Carlene, I met her on the very first day of school at college. And I mean, she was awesome. I mean, she's always been awesome. And I knew I'd like to get to know her a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, I had this plan. I was thinking how, and obviously I wasn't the only guy who thought this, okay? There were a lot of guys. And one of those guys was my roommate. And he would not shut up about it. He would talk about her every day. Carlene this, Carlene. I, like, I know you dummy. I know she's awesome. And then I was conflicted because, okay, right? Rules of engagement in war. Like if you tell somebody, give them a chance, an opportunity, and they don't follow through, you're, it's free game, right? Is, is that how it works, right? All is fair in love and war. So I said to him, look, I am tired of you ask, talking about her. And there's a big Christmas banquet coming up and somebody else is gonna ask her. So if you don't ask her by Friday, I'm asking her. That's fair, right? You, you, I, I think it was a Monday or a Tuesday. That's, that's like three or four days. That's lots of time to come up with a plan. He didn't ask her Friday. I did. We were roommates next semester, but that's okay. Because I got married to her, right? I told him this was going to happen. He was forewarned. I am not responsible with what he does with that information. I'm just responsible for the information. Or when you get married, right? Um, you know, the first 10 years or whatever, you're, maybe you're trying to be nice. And so you, 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 you warn your partner about something and they do it anyway. And you're like, oh, that's too bad. But inside you're thinking, I told you, right? But then after, after 10 years, you just go, I told you, you dummy. I told you, right? And then, and then after like 30 years, you don't even have to say it anymore. You just look at them like, <laughs> right? You see, I, you know what I'm talking about. We, we all know that feeling when someone told us something, we did it anyway. Like when my wife would serve me hot soup and she'd say, careful, it's hot. You know, I didn't realize she had just scooped lava out of a molten volcano and I was gonna stick it in my mouth. I didn't think that was what she was saying, but I stick it in burn. I told you, yeah, thanks a lot, right? But, but here's the point. Jesus said, I'm telling you these things. I'm telling you. This is the way life is. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And here's the interesting thing about this idea. It's, it's in him. Peace isn't something we manufacture. Peace isn't, uh, you know, us solving our problems on our own with our incredible intelligence or incredible technology because all those things fail us. He said, I've told you these things so that in me you will have peace. He even went so far to make this audacious claim, he said, everything is possible for the one who believes. And you're like, everything? That's what Jesus said. Now again, there's a caveat here because again, we frame everything as to what we want, our desire. God, give me a million dollars. God, help me never have any pain ever again in my life. God, help me. And God says, no, 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 no. Everything is possible for the one who believes in what? In me. My way, not your way. Jesus would say it this way in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in what? In him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So here's the condition. Guarantee, 2024, you're gonna have trouble. But guarantee two is 
He has overcome the world. So the conditional promise is in the middle is you will have peace if you believe. And this word believe in the Greek is the word pistis. <laughs> That's a great word too. Pistis, which literally means to trust completely. So in this relationship, there are two parts. God's part, which he has already done, and your part. For most of us as Christians in North America, we think believe is about what you think in your head. And that's not what he's talking about here. What you really believe is revealed in crisis. What you really believe is revealed in trouble. Do you believe God is your provider? Yes, I believe it. Okay, well, what about when you have no money? I believe God is my healer. Okay, how about when you've got that diagnosis? Oh, I believe God wants me to forgive. Okay, how about when you've been hurt so deeply that you don't think it's possible? See, the kind of faith that Jesus is asking us of is to trust him completely, but it can't be just in words. It must be backed up by our action. Because there's one thing this culture needs no more of, and it's opinions. Opinions are absolutely useless. Opinions are just theories of what could be or how I feel or what I think. And those are no help. We need transformation. We need transformation. And that's about character. I wrote it this way in my, in my journal this week. I said, true belief is rooted in the right things. It's rooted in who God is. I'm going to talk about this more next week. That translates into action. You know, one of the things that our culture criticizes us as followers of Christ for, and they are accurate in this, is that sometimes we're fake. We say the right things, but we don't do the right things. We say God loves everyone, but we allow hatred into our heart. We say, yeah, God wants us to forgive as he's forgiven us, but we hold on to that grudge, right? See, it, it can't just be in what you say or what you think. It's trans, it translates into action that transforms your character. You want to see revival? Stop talking about it. Pray about it, sure, but you've got to live it. You've got to become a person of character that is contagious. As a matter of fact, I am convinced that if you let the peace of God transform your heart, it is so contagious because people say, what is up with you? How can you possibly have joy in the middle of this situation? How can you have peace and sleep at night with this going on? How can you be so loving when they did that to you? And the only answer, the only explanation is because I believe not just in thought or words, but in action, that there is a God who is good and is bigger than my mountain. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. And this is only revealed through crisis. Maybe that's why in Hebrews, the author said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Not because God is fickle, because your belief is fickle. You know, it's interesting, in the Bible, Jesus is astonished most often by one of two things. One, by people who should have believed and did not believe. His disciples, he's like, he does all these miracles and they're still questioning, are you who you say you are? And the, he's like, he's astonished, are you kidding me? What do I have to do for you to believe? The second time he's astonished is when people who shouldn't have faith have it. A Roman centurion who says, look, look, Jesus, you don't even have to come. You just say it and it will be done. And Jesus is like, whoa, now that's belief. So the question is, what are you going to really believe in 2024 in the face of your trouble? That's the question. Not in what you say or what you think, but how you behave, how you act. And so Jesus says, in this world, you're gonna have trouble. That's a guarantee. I, I wish I could tell you, you know, 2024, smooth sailing. You're not gonna have a single problem, but I would never wish that on you. You know why? Because maybe those problems, those challenges, those troubles will actually be a part of God's bigger plan of shaping and forming you into something great. 
And who wouldn't want that? In this world, you'll have trouble, but take heart. I've told you these things so that in me, you may have peace, may have your choice, your decision. I refuse to be defined this year by my circumstance. I choose to be defined by the one who made me. I choose to reject the opinions of this culture and this world, and I choose to believe the truth of who you say I am. I will not be defined by my limitations or my mistakes. I will take the words of Jesus seriously. Say to this mountain, be moved and it will be moved. Ask the God who shuts the mouths of lions and destroys giants and knocks down walls to be powerfully present in your situation. I've told you this, so that in me you may have peace. So why would anyone do this? Well, because you put your faith, your trust in the one who's overcome the world. The things that Jesus was talking about was his death and resurrection. See, these disciples thought he was gonna change the world the way they wanted him to change the world, but he was working on something far deeper and far more powerful, their character, their soul, who they really were. And he said, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna come back to life to prove to you that I am who I say that I am. And so, yes, you're going to have trouble in 2024. But you're not a victim and you're not defenseless because you have a God who is present with you in the pain, in the trouble. I've told this story a couple times, but it's worth retelling. I grew up in uh, Thailand and it's changed a lot since I grew up, but back then especially, and actually it's still this way in some some parts of the world, uh, the traffic is a little bit different. There's a different philosophy, let's just say, a different approach to traffic than we would have maybe here in North America. For example, those lines on the road, decoration. I mean, yeah, if there are three lanes, but you can fit five cars, fit five cars. I mean, as a matter of fact, if no one's on the sidewalk and you can get around traffic, you go ahead and you take that as well, right? Helmets on a motorcycle, are you kidding me? How many people can you get on a motorcycle? That's the real question. And weave through traffic with your whole family. Five, I've seen five or six of family on a scooter weaving through traffic. I have seen doors in the back open, boards laid across so you could put more people in the back seat, literally hanging outside with the window rolled down, door open. It's true. I was in Hyderabad. They've welded metal bars around their cars so they can literally bump each other out of the way. (laughs) If you are a pedestrian, good luck. That's all I can say. There's no right of way. There's, I mean, if you are dumb enough to stand in front of a moving car, you will get hit. That's the rule. There's this one guy, I remember going to school, I felt so bad for him. His job was to try to stop the traffic for the train. And all they equipped him with was a little gate on wheels and a little orange flag. That guy had more faith than all this room combined because he would wave that thing and pray that people would stop without running him over. It, it, it's true. It is, it is a totally different world. So you can imagine whenever we would cross the road, my parents would have quite a bit of concern for me. So I'm eight years old and we're going to cross this road. And my dad did what he always did instinctively, intuitively. He just reached out his hand. Now I saw it, I mean, if you've seen my dad, if you have not yet ever shaken my father's hand, do yourself a favor, on the way out today, shake his hand. It is a pillowy source of strength and joy. It is just the most wonderful experience. He has massive hands and he's a large person, especially in Thailand. It's not like I missed it, I just didn't want it. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, well, I'm eight years old, I'm I'm practically a man. I've got stubble on my legs. What, I don't need to hold your hand anymore. And then my dad and I are very different personalities. I can be a little bit bombastic. We'll use that word. Uh, he, he's very prim and proper, right? And so he doesn't say anything. He just kind of stands there and looks at me. And he realizes I'm not taking your hand. So he goes, okay, rather than argue with me, he just looks at me and he says, okay, well, just stay really close. Watch my feet. Pfft. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can do that. No problem. 
So we start going across the street, us and about 50 other people. Um, we're kind of in a herd, you know, to protect ourselves. Try to get in the inside so the outsides get hurt, hit first. Anyway, so we're, we're, there's a gap, and so we're making a run for it. And we're, we're going across, and I'm doing really well. He steps, I step, well, I'm moving, I'm doing really great. But you know what? About three or four steps in, I realize I'm free. I'm totally free. <laughs> I'm looking at these other babies holding their parents' hands, you know, right? Babies. And, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I am free. I can do whatever I want. And I'm elated by my freedom and independence. And in that moment, all I think about is me and I forget about everything else. And when I finally realize that maybe I should pay a little more attention and look down, there no feet. Not my dad's feet, not anybody's feet. And to my horror, I realize I'm in the middle of the road all by myself. And traffic is coming. Now there was a motorcycle and that motorcycle was gonna get ahead of all the other traffic and I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt that he was trying to miss me. But every time I moved, he moved towards me and we kept doing this all the way till he hit me. I went flying across the road, scraped, bleeding and crying. Because you know what was worse than the physical pain? Was the embarrassment, was the humiliation I felt. And in the middle of my agony, I felt, and I use that word appropriately, my father's presence. You know the Bible where it says you he covers you with the, the shadow of the Almighty. <laughs> That's what I felt. I felt his shadow. And I didn't want to look at him. It's weird, but I felt so much shame. And my dad could have said a lot of things in that moment. He could have said, I told you so, dummy. <laughs> and he would have been right. He did tell me. He could have said, you know what? As a matter of fact, you in the truck over there, could you just come and finish the job? Like just work it all over. He deserves to experience the consequences of his choices. But he didn't say anything. He just picked me up. Because that's what I needed. And he took me to the side of the road and I pulled myself together. And fortunately, I wasn't hurt too badly. And we never talked about it again. Because he was enough. I should have trusted him. I, I, I should have trusted the hands that held me when I was so small that I couldn't hold myself. I should have trusted the hands that worked so hard to make sure that I always had food on my table and clothes on my back. I should have trusted the hands that every time I jumped off a high place caught me. But I didn't. I experienced something very powerful that day and it's only on looking back and reflecting on it that I could see that God was teaching me something. But there are so many times in this world that God says, I have overcome the world, trust me. I'm not trying to ruin your fun, I'm not. I'm actually trying to save you. I'm telling you these things. These are traps, these are things to watch out for. I'm telling you these things because I love you, I care about you, and I want you to navigate life well and safely. I want you to experience everything I have for you. Just take my hand, trust me. And so many times we say, no, God, you know what? I got this one. I'll go to church. I'll sing the songs when I feel like it. But don't ask me to do that or this or the other thing. I'm good. And then trouble hits. We get sideswiped by a circumstance we weren't looking for or didn't see. We get taken out by a hurtful word. A situation or circumstance overpowers us. And unfortunately for many of us, our first response is shame. 
We allow that moment to define us. We, we stay on the road, scarred and beaten, and we say, well, I guess this is what, what I deserve. I guess this is my life. I guess this is all that there is. And the God of the universe steps into time and space. And he says, look, I've told you these things so that in me, you will have peace. Take heart. I have overcome the world. I got you. And for 2024, I wish I could tell you it's going to be the best year you've ever had. I can't guarantee that, nor can you. I do know that you will have trouble. I hope it's not extreme, but I do know that this world is broken and you will have trouble. But I also know that there is a God who has overcome the world. There is a God who is a mountain mover. There is a God who shuts the mouths of lions and destroys giants. There is a God who knocks down walls and makes a way where there seems to be no way. This is the God that we believe in. And we believe not just in our words or in our thoughts, but in our actions. So when he says be generous, we're generous because it's his. When he says forgive, we forgive because he's forgiven us. When he says love even your enemies, we choose love every day. And sometimes we stumble and fall, but every time he picks us up, if we let him, and he's doing something, he's making us stronger, more resilient. The next time we're better at it, because he sees something in you that maybe not even you see in you. Greatness. And so as we approach 2024, we can have peace. A peace that passes all understanding. If we're willing to take hold of it and trust him, and that gives us courage, I will not be defined by my situation or circumstance, but by the God who made me and is doing something in me. And if he says, do this, I will do it. And if he says, don't do that, I won't do that because I trust him. Jesus said, have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, aligned with the prayer of Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so as we begin 2024, we have two guarantees. You'll have trouble, and there's a God who's greater. And in between those two realities is the tension of a conditional promise. I have told you this so that in me you may have peace if you choose to believe. If you choose to believe. If you choose to believe. If you're watching online today, I want to encourage you, if you need prayer or you want to talk to somebody, just use that chat window. We are there for you. If you're here in person and you need someone to pray with you or you want someone to talk to, there's a prayer team that's coming to the front right now. Or you can go to Central Connect, the Connect wall, and someone uh, there with a lanyard, one of our pastors, would be happy to assist you. I want to remind you of a couple of things that are happening that we've put into place as mechanisms to help us grow our spiritual muscle one is the 21 days of prayer. Again, if you didn't join us last week, I want to invite you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Yes, I said that right. 6 a.m. in Auditorium B, you're welcome. You can also join us online. Or if 6 a.m. is a little early for you, uh, you can actually, on YouTube, our, our central channel, you can uh, watch it later. Some of you have been watching it just before you go to bed as a devotional. You can do that as well. But let's really dig in to what we believe. Also, on Tuesday night, we have a place for more. If you are a part of our church family and maybe something Garrett said stirred you, and you're like, I want to I take a next step. I want to be involved at a higher level. Um, a place for more is a leadership track that we are introducing as a church family to help you become the leader God created you to be. And then on Wednesday, we have a place for uh, you, which is different. It's for those of you who are newer to Central and you're like, I'd like to learn more about this church. What is it about? What do we stand for? A place for you is that, and it's an introduction into groups. And so 21 days of prayer every morning this week at 6. A place for more if you're looking to be a leader in some capacity in your life 
and a place for you if you'd like to learn more about us. But today, I bless you. Um, before I do that, I do want to say something. Thank you. Thank you for 23 amazing years. Thank you for loving me uh, with all of my strengths and weaknesses. Thank you for allowing me to be my crazy self. Thank you for allowing me to serve with you and that together we're, we're dreaming for something really big, not only for our lives, but for Niagara. I just want to thank you for being amazing. Thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. You're amazing. Thank you. That's all today. And so today, I bless you. I bless you with a painful truth that in this world you will have trouble because this world is broken. But I bless you with a greater truth that God is greater than any circumstance or situation you will face. And I bless you with the choice you and I have every day to believe that God will overcome whatever situation or circumstance. And when we believe that, we truly have peace. Because peace isn't a feeling, it's a perspective that God, you are gonna say to this mountain, move and it will be moved. So may 2024 be filled with God's very best in the trouble and in the blessing. And may every choice, decision, action be rooted in a belief that God is greater, that his way is the only way. And may you experience his peace as a result. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo!